Hey guys, welcome to the car vlog. So I'm trying with another camera, I'm actually trying with a DSLR so that I can look at my phone. I used to shoot these on my phone, but um, then I couldn't look at my phone. So the car vlogs are going to discuss a bunch of subjects that are related to questions put to me. So let me put that in a clear way. I'm going to answer questions that are put to me always within the context of web design, web programming, coding in general, and business and careers. Because I think that 95% of us are into coding and programming because we either want to get a great job, it's highly paid, you want to either become a freelancer, or you want to maybe set up your own business. That's the vast majority. There are also people who are hobbyists, and there are also people who are in business, have businesses, and realize that learning how to code is such an important tool set to, uh, to have. Not necessarily because, as a business owner, it's not necessarily you're going to be a full-time coder, you're going to be writing your own code, but as business owners who know how to code know, they know that knowing how to code is going to make them better business owners because they'll have a much better understanding of technology, coding, programming, web application development. They'll understand all this stuff which will make them better managers, better decision makers when dealing with developers you may hire to do your jobs. All right, so I'm going to answer a question that was put to me. Uh, hi, Steph. I started my journey with coding in your web dev course, HTML, CSS, JS, PHP. I have also been trying to immerse myself into web dev coding topics, mostly through listening to vlogs, yours and others, or lectures on YouTube's. I'm soon to be 40 and a mother or two, and I feel I need to be more selective on what I put my time into, so whatever I learn, I can put into practice as soon as possible and invest my time into learning things that can bring mostly long-term results. Recently, I've listened to your vlog on why HTML5-based mobile apps is better than native, and how should we approach and how should we approach it from a freelancer perspective? Yesterday, I was listening to a YouTube video sponsored by Google, uh, Chrome developers on progressive web apps, PWA, why they are a better investment than a mobile app, especially native apps. What is your view on the topic, and what do you think about PWA in relation to HTML5-based mobile apps? If future belongs to PWA, how a freelancer should approach it? What you should know, tools, skills to build an effective PWA. Okay, sometimes my English is bad when I read these emails because I'm not reading it properly, and sometimes the email is written to me, and that's cool. I, I make mistakes when I might write my email, so don't worry about that. Good question. So, if you look back at my vlogs, I've been talking about this for years. In fact, in articles, I felt that native app development was going to shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink. And the reasons I think native app, well, let me discuss. Native app development is building mobile apps in the native languages. So for iOS, that would be Swift, and to a lesser extent these days, Objective-C. And for Android, that would be, of course, Java. And now people are looking at Kotlin. Kotlin is uh, a programming language, a new, new language that was put together by a company called JetBrains, accepted by Google, so now you can develop native apps with Kotlin in, uh, well, you can build native apps for Android in Kotlin. Now, why would you want to do that over Java? Because Kotlin is like a lighter, nimbler language. You get a lot more stuff done uh, quickly. When you're looking at programming languages in general, there's, um, there's a move in the last many years now towards lighter, nimbler languages that allow you to write code much more quickly to get a lot more done. The trade-off usually is speed. Usually with lighter, nimbler languages like Python, um, they run much slower than if you wrote the same type of app in Java. Now, the trade-off, though, it takes much longer to write it in Java versus Python. All right, let's get back to native versus non-native apps. So, non-native apps are apps written in the web stack. So, uh, yeah. So, why is that advantageous? Because native app development, iOS, 
uh, Java, Kotlin, Objective C, etc. The problem with writing in apps natively is that then you would have to write them again for the other platform. So let's say you wrote your app first with for iOS for Apple iPhones, etc. Then you would have to write them all over again from scratch for Android and vice versa. So that means you're gonna to have to maintain two code bases, which is a you're gonna to have to have people who are experts in iOS, experts in Android, which is a lot more work, a lot more cost. And one of the big things, and I've talked about this for a long time, but one of the things I don't know if I mentioned it before. I hope I did, but if I didn't, here it is. A lot of people don't want to install apps. They don't want to install your app. So if I put out a Killer Sites or a Studio Web app, a lot of people are not going to want to install that app. And guess what? For most mobile applications, you don't need to write a native app. The only advantage to writing to a native app is that it's going to be a bit more performant in that the code is going to run more efficiently so things are going to run faster but smartphones are so fast these days and the non-native apps which we're going to get into in a second are so performant these days there's only rare exceptions where you're going to need the performance of a native app and let's get into freelancing just for a second since people are here or hear about the business end of coding guess what the number of native app jobs is less. I can tell you from friends of mine who work, very, who, who work for very large organizations and they tell me that they have dropped native app development. And this is like a billion dollar business. They've dropped native app development for the reasons I just cited. And they found that just developing web-based apps using PhoneGap as an example, using React Native as another example, are using progressive web apps, as this person is questioning me about. Using progressive web apps is another option. Now, let's talk about that a little bit more. So in terms of the productivity end, we're talking about the nerd aspects of looking at software development of app development. You're much more productive writing it with web technologies, whether it be PhoneGap, PhoneGap React Native, or progressive web apps because you just have to write it once and then it works on both platforms, right? In terms of job opportunities, again, always comes back to me for job opportunities. If you learn the web stack, that's why I teach the web stack, you can do progressive web apps, you can jump into PhoneGap, which means you can do jump into React. What this all means, React Native rather, what this all means is that with this one skill set that I teach, you don't have to learn from me, for wherever, wherever you learn the web stack, it opens up the possibility of being able to develop mobile apps for any platform. You have, that, you have the, the foundation to be able to do that. On the other hand, with the web stack, you'll also be able to, to develop websites and traditional desktop web apps. So. This technology, uh, this Google technology, the uh, progressive web app, takes a typical responsive website, which is just a website that reforms itself to look good on any device. So if I look at, let's go to uh, studioweb.com. So studioweb.com, you see it, it reforms itself. So it looks very good. looks really good on, on mobile, right? Now if I flip it, see it, re it shifts, it resizes itself. Looks really good. Videos run, everything runs. You know. And this is just your standard responsive website. Now, P uh, progressive web apps, they take it to an, uh, uh, an extra level. So what they do is using JavaScript, they allow you to preload assets into the devices that's preloading images, maybe preloading videos, etc., and other things. I won't get into it's not a, a vlog about PWA, progressive web apps, but it just takes it to an, an extra level. So when you learn the web stack, you're opening yourself up to a much broader set of uh, business and employment opportunities 
right? You can get into the web, you can get into web apps, you can get into progressive web apps, you can get into uh, mobile application development. You see what I'm saying? There's a whole range of, of uh, opportunities business-wise that the web stack gives you that learning Swift, learning Objective-C, which is iOS native development, or learning um, Java Android development doesn't give you. It's a wider range of options business-wise, job-wise, freelancing-wise. That's why I have been, for a while now, a big advocate of the web stack. And the market is showing that I'm correct in this regard. The market is showing that I'm correct when I told people years ago to not invest in learning Swift so much because there's many more opportunities in the web stack. Again, I'm not talking about the technical merits of the language. Swift has amazing qualities to it as a programming language, as does, as does, as does uh, Python, as does Java. Depends on what you're doing, right? I always look at technologies as tools in my tool belt. I don't identify as a Java programmer. When I was younger and less experienced in the 90s, I used to, I used to say that I'm a Java programmer. But I learned after several years of experience that I, I looked at myself as a developer. I didn't care what the language was. I didn't care what the framework was, etc. I just was able to go in, look at the job that was required, and then choose the language and the framework that made sense for that particular job. Sometimes I would just use what I knew. And sometimes I would just learn something. That's why my courses are designed to teach that core, that foundation, because real world web developers, real world developers are constantly having to learn something new. You may have to learn one little library. You may have to learn a whole new language. Doesn't matter. If you're a professional developer, you just go, you learn. I can be productive in any programming language with just a few hours. I'm talking a language I don't know, I never touched before. Give me a few hours and I'm writing pro-level code. That's because I've been trained and I am very knowledgeable in the, in the foundations. Do I know everything? No. In fact, I have now forgotten, at this particular moment in time, I have now forgotten much more than I still remember about programming in terms of specific languages. Ask me about the details about the Java libraries. I forget most of them off the top of my head. This is stuff I used to know. Like I could go deep into it. I could tell you, oh, yeah, yeah, boom, 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 and there it is. I don't remember, but you know what? Give me two, three hours back in it. It will come back to me like this. Same thing with Swift. I've only written some basic Swift, just played around with it. I don't consider myself a Swift programmer because I only played with it a few years ago when it came out. And I, I said, good language. But I'm not a Swift programmer. But if I ever had to do a job in Swift, give me a few hours. I'm getting, I'm starting to write pro, product, production code because I'm just an experienced professional developer. So, yes, the quickest route to becoming a professional coder or a programmer and the most flexible route is the route of the uh, web developer. HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript. From there, you have a whole range of possibilities. If you want to go freelance, people who know me, they know I say PHP. Why? Because there's so many opportunities there for freelancers to make a lot of money. If you want to get into robotics and AI, Python. You get the, and you just, we can just take it from there. You, another option for freelancing is JavaScript with Node.js. You want to do uh, app, mobile app development, you can go to PhoneGap. This is HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PhoneGap. Or you could go into uh, React Native, perhaps. Or you might want to try PWA. Uh, it's another option. I hope that answers that email. One of my rambling vlogs sorry about that new format here i hope you like this style and using the onboard mics and just let me know if the sound sucks to you guys i think mean, it's fine for a vlog all right we'll talk soon ciao